Stay tuned for a story of a business success and ultimate business failure for the builder of some of Canada's best yachts that were ever made. It was the mid-1960s and Jim Bissaker owned a construction business which wasn't doing all that well. How this relates to boat building we are yet to learn but one thing is for sure fiberglass was a relatively new material for boat building. The connection may have been dire yachts in uh, Warren, Rhode Island. Jim and buddies Dirk Kuhlman and John Byrne um, paid to learn how to work with this new fiberglass material at the Dyer plant. Now the other mystery is why Jim Bissaker would name his new business Grampian Marine Limited. The truth is the Grampian Mountains in Scotland was where Jim's grandmother came from. In 1968 or so, Jim built a fiberglass plant at the back of his construction business property on Woody Road in Oakville, Ontario, where he began building dinghies under license. It wasn't long before businesses from the United States asked about uh, Grampian building boats for them. Chuck Angel, for instance, from Rochester, New York, wanted him to build his uh, Triangle 20. Soon, Jim was building the uh, U.S. Lot, Yachts Line, the O'Day Line of Day Sailors. Today, we know how well built those early fiberglass boats were, and we can still easily buy them used. But in the 1960s and early 70s, if you wanted to be liberated from the leaky wooden boat syndrome, you really needed to buy new. At one point, O'Day offered to buy Grampian Marine, but Jim said no. Later, Grampian built albacores under license for uh, Ferry Marine. Whitby Marine, uh, only a few kilometers down the lake, was also building the boat, but not under license. By uh, changing its name from albacore to albatross, Whitby Marine hope to bypass copyright laws. Soon, Snipes, 420s, Classic 22s, the G17 Cuddy Cabin dinghy, and the Dutch-designed uh, Flying 10 were all being made at the Grampian plant. Now, Karl Marx, the famous economist, once defined a capitalist as someone who owns the means of production. It struck uh, Bissaker that uh, Grampy Marine Limited must begin producing its own designs. Enter designer Alex McGrew. Alex's family ran McGrew and Company Limited, a family boat building business on the Clyde in Scotland since 1911. Alex was told to uh, design boats with good sailing ability, yet have a great deal of comfort. He began with the popular Grampian 26. The G26 came as a full keel version as well as a trailable swing keel model. Then came the G30 and later the trailable G23. Now, some say Jim Bissaker was a poor record keeper. We don't know the exact number of boats he produced, but the Grampian owner's marina keeps good records, and it is believed that there were about 980 G26s produced, about 300 G23s, 107 G28s, around 350 G30s, and later about 50 with a cutter rig, about uh, 50 G34s, 
based on the triangle of 32. About 50 G234 aft cabins, the strangest looking <laughs> cramping I've ever seen. About 300 G46s were built, uh, but very few of the Discovery 7.9, which was an updated G26 by another name that was supposed to save the firm from bankruptcy. Sales had been so good in the U.S. that they actually opened a plant in North Carolina, but that was when the Canadian dollar was worth 70 cents U.S. Sales boomed. But once the Canadian buck reached a dollar for U.S., Grampian was in financial difficulty. In 1979, it declared bankruptcy. This is by no means the whole story, but you got the five minute version. If you're interested in watching more info about the Grampian line, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you want to do some uh, fact checking, it can be done by writing in the comments below. I'm Alan Stokel. Thank you very much for watching.